Hello there, I have a uh, 200 watt Renogy uh, Eclipse solar briefcase. This is applicable to all solar briefcases, whether it be 100 watts or 200 watts. This is uh, the Eclipse monocrystalline. There's two latches here on the side. Interestingly enough, and not even from the company's own YouTube page, there is not one single video on YouTube that tells you how to simply and accurately hook up your briefcase, not even one. Everything is an unintelligent video by somebody that just opened up the box for the first time. So I thought, well, this is absolutely necessary to put onto YouTube. So I built a few of these setups and uh, you can actually get the briefcase with the charge, charge controller. And I have one of those 100 watts up in my cabin. It comes with a wonder, the better is the adventurer. And uh, I think they're currently on sale for $49 on how to simply set this up. One thing that Renogy has made a big mistake on is that on the alligator clips that go from your charge controller, um, there is a, a 10 watt fuse and you need to open this up and replace it with a 20 watt. And the one thing nobody ever mentions is this, this is the weak, weak link in your uh, briefcase or outdoor portable solar power setup. And you need to have at least a couple spare fuses. I have those right here. I have a 20 watt and a 30 watt spare fuse. So you don't actually have to splice the cable and uh, have power to your battery from your charge controller. So always have a couple spare fuses. I have all of this set up since this actually pancakes like a taco uh, for latching it together that you need to have correct placement on all of this stuff such that one thing is not interfering with something else on the other solar panel. So these uh, cabling extensions are out of the way of my charge controller. The reason why I actually have this on latches is exactly like that of uh, Renogy's other briefcase solar panels that have a flip out charge controller, is that I can actually, when the briefcase, you extend the legs right here and you actually have uh, the briefcase at like a 30 or 45 degree angle, I could just reach down and pull this out and look at my charge controller and uh, see what uh, my current uh, amperage is and how things are going. But also to I noticed that even Renogy, the company that makes this, they make a mistake on their own video, and so does everybody else. If you have really bright sunlight, what everybody will do when they actually set this up is they'll hook their charge controller up to the solar panel before they actually hook it up to their battery. And you can actually burn out your charge controller in a very small handful of seconds, and the whole system is essentially shot. Obviously, your solar panels are still okay, but you can't do anything with it. So never, ever, 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 hook your charge controller and your solar panel together before you hook up your battery. So when you hook things up, hook your battery to your charge controller. Once you're done charging, unhook your solar to your charge controller. These are my charge controller cables right here, and these are the leads from the photovoltaics or the solar panel right here. First solar panel hooks to this switch board connector, and right here on the MC4 connector is so. My final step is to hook my pair of MC4 connectors together after I've hooked up the charge controller to the battery. Now you can use lead acid. This is an obnoxiously expensive lithium iron phosphate, so 100 uh, amp hour battery. These are currently, depending on where you get them at, it's an $800 battery. Infinitely less heavy than a lead acid or a flooded battery. Um, but there you go. Like I said, these are just brass rings. They don't need to have rings and uh, latches this big, but this lets me pull it out. And the reason why, too, I have these here, and I don't need those. I could have put my charge controller in the upper corner right there and uh, actually had a short connector to my charge controller. Is that this 15-foot extension, nine times out of ten, I'm going to leave it uh, hook and loop to the inside of my solar panel. But, you know, if there's a light sprinkle outside and I don't want to actually uh, go outside and uh, mess with uh, my charge controller, even though it is technically waterproof. I can actually take my uh, photovoltaic um, briefcase, get it kind of close to my cabin or the house, wherever I'm charging from, and actually unlatch it from there, unhook these, get my charge controller 15 feet away from my uh, solar briefcase, which is completely weatherproof sealed, and get it inside the cabin. I can drop it through the window so I don't have to go outside and look at that, or nor do I have to have my battery. So I actually have uh, the 15 foot extension from my uh, charge controller to the photovoltaics. I could bring all of this inside and also to have my battery 
you know, within X number of feet on the 10 foot uh, alligator clip extensions further than I have my charge control. So it makes it really handy. Nine times out of 10, if it's a bright sunny day, there's not gonna be any inclement weather and I don't want my $800 battery or my charge controller outside. I'm just gonna leave my battery underneath the lean of uh, my uh, photovoltaic 200 watt briefcase. Like I said, this is an Eclipse 200 watt briefcase. This is applicable to all photovoltaic briefcases and portable on the go setups. The weight on this is uh, 35 pounds. The briefcase 200 watt solars are 33.4 pounds, plus another pound and a half or two pounds on this specific adventurer charge controller. Uh, this briefcase currently is on sale, but typical price is $500, another $50 for the charge controller, so $550. And then you could go down to Lowe's or Home Depot and get yourself a 100 or 110 amp flooded or lead acid battery for roughly like around 120. 100 to 150 dollars depends on who makes it so you're looking at a total of 550 plus 150 so right at 700 bucks but with a lithium iron phosphate baby like this which is as good as it gets just one battery the charge controller and the photovoltaic you're looking at 800 dollars plus 550 so yeah looking at $1,350, $1,400, $1, including tax on absolutely everything here. But that's as good as it gets. The highest efficiency photovoltaics and uh, the 3% better than the standard uh, monocrystalline photovoltaics that come from Renogy. Charge controller, you can get this 200 watt Eclipse with the charge controller mounted on a hinge in the upper left portion of the briefcase. And I think it's like another 40 bucks, but I don't like the Wanderer that they actually put with these. This is their lowest end charge controller if you buy this briefcase with this. And it does not give me the option unless I want to unscrew it from its hinged mount like I have here. So my setup is a lot better. Using these hook and loops, you can see I have a lot of hook and loops connecting everything here. This makes things a lot simpler. It gives me the option of uh, pulling in my charge controller into the cabin or the house or wherever I am. And also, too, this additional $30 cable setup of 15 foot each on my positive and negative lead lets me pull it in the house or the option of just leaving it as it is. All of this folds up completely, so everything is positioned correctly if you're going to make a setup like this, such that when you fold both together, this mount presses in over here and these press in over there. There's no interference on the cabling against each other, so the whole briefcase snaps together perfectly. So, there you go. I can't believe there's not a single YouTube video on how to correctly set up a uh, portable on-the-go uh, monocrystalline photovoltaic. Not from Renogy and nobody else. There's not a single video on the internet. Once again, first solar panel to the second. Second solar panel to MC4 connectors. Last thing you hook up are your MC4 connectors. These go lead to vis-a-vis -vis these 15-foot cables which connect to the charge controller right here. Yes right here and of course these are my alligator clip leads that go down to here which of course connect positive and negative to positive and negative battery terminals so last connector mc4 connector from the photovoltaics or the solar panels to the mc4 connectors which i have mounted right here i could have made that shorter i had a shorter cable setup but i wanted 15 feet it's more than adequate enough for most things to my charge controller so I never have to unhook or hook up any connectors on my charge controller as long as last connector on setting up and first thing to disconnect on unconnecting your system. So when you first connect, charge your, connect your photovoltaic, excuse me, connect your charge controller to your battery and then connect your charge controller to the photovoltaics. And when you go to disassemble, make sure the first thing you disconnect is your, uh, photovoltaics to your charge controller unless you want to completely burn out your charge controller which is no big deal at 40 50 bucks but if you're out in the field then that ruins pretty much everything yes it, it ruins everything so let me know if you have any questions on anything and always be sure to have spare fuses at least a couple spare fuses um inside here this is a wonderful little setup this uh, actually does come with its own case from renogy and uh, it's actually a nice case. It's not going to protect your uh, hard impact on the glass and the outside of the, uh, the monocrystallines, but you need to take care of it. So let me know if you have uh, any questions at all. And by the way, last reminder, 
you do need a fuse from your charge controller to your battery, which of course is right here. Make sure it's at least 20 amps on a 200 watt. You don't need that many. You need a 10 or 15. I recommend a 15 amp fuse on a 100 watt solar briefcase, but you do not need on a portable system like this. You would if it was mounted on the roof of your RV or on the roof of your house, but you do not need a fuse on a portable briefcase system between the photovoltaics and the charge controller. 100% you do not, okay? Safety is always important, but on a portable unit like this, you never need a fuse between the photovoltaics and the charge controller, okay? On your house, yes, absolutely. On the top of your RV, yes, absolutely. You know, that's a fire hazard if you don't, but on a system like this, completely 100% unnecessary. I hope you like this video. It's the first and only video on how to correctly set up very simply your briefcase photovoltaic charge controller and battery system for connection. Um, if you get also to save you 15 bucks if you buy uh, the briefcase from Renogy with the charge controller in there for another $50 option essentially it does come with a cheaper charge controller but it also does come with these. You can get these on eBay. These are simple you know, alligator clip connectors. And the ends here, I just have uh, bare wires that have been soldered so that they don't fray out. It's very, very simple. It takes you 10 seconds to screw these into the back of the uh, charge controller. One from the photovoltaics to charge controller, and the other one from the charge controller to the battery alligator clips, okay? I hope I made that simple. There's not a single thing that I didn't explain at least twice. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video, and goodbye.